How Hannah Tillin the Duke? This year the Queen put one more again from this year, breaking the color barrier comments. Well, Hannah Tillin and look for me and probably wonder what at the end between we two children. I know. Some Hannah Tillin don't figure out where it up, I hope. So anyhow, this is Christine. Now Christine, tell them what is this right here? Okay, this right here is a rain barrel, or as maybe we historically have called it a sister. Yes. People tend to know what a cistern is. It's right. simply a way to catch rain harvest water. rainwater, right? right? We have rain falling all the time, especially this past summer. Right. And even the drought, right? Fortunately. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> Fortunately, even in the last summer we didn't have enough rain. Right. We still could catch what we had, use it later. You can use the water that you harvested for plants, gardens, mm -hmm. animals, anything but drinking. You now, know? why wouldn't you harvest it for drinking? At this point, you know, other countries like India right. and Southeastern Asia, they actually are drinking it, but they're filtering it. And part of that is because, one, we don't necessarily know it's in our rain. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of acids and different things like okay. that. Also, we're collecting water that's running off of your roof. Okay. You don't know it's on your What's roof. What's on the roof, right. exactly. But I know people kind of got into hard times that right. have ended up coming up with some sort of filtration system and it's saved lives. It's completely shaped whole communities. Okay. By taking this water, mm -hmm. and it's water that doesn't have Chloride, chlorine, anything like that. In it. It's mm -hmm. great for plants. Um, right. At this point, we're lucky enough here in our country to not have to drink it. And okay. part of it is helping things like this to kind of help us avoid getting to the point where we're to drink it. Right. Right. But now we live in the Gullah Geechee Nation, so it rains a lot there. We're surrounded by water there, everything. Now the likely thing would be that you'd see one of these just sitting out in the yard, not right. necessarily catching the water off the roof. So now in that case, you still advise that you still just use it for everything else though, except drinking, because one of our traditions, people just use the water for everything, for cooking, for drinking, for all that. I know what some of the children that watch this with your grandmama, she just said, your grandmama look at it and said, oh, that's a whole barrel of stuff. I know you probably think it's a little bit fancy than back in the day, but like you said, some people wash their hair with the water and we would cook with the water and everything. So living in the Gullah Geechee Nation, we're used to seeing these in the past. So it's really a good thing. Now, I noticed this though, I was asking you about this hanging on the side, and this is for overflow. Yes, exactly. It will, this barrel, 55 gallons, will fill up within 20 minutes. You know, my parents were collecting water, and they both right. called me, Christine, it filled up in no time, and it's really exciting. Right. The rule of thumb is, one inch of rain on a thousand square foot roof, mm -hmm. which is about average size, will yield six gallons of water. Wow. So this being 55 gallons, it's nice to have some way to, to capture and keep the overflow. If it's next oh. to your house or it's next to some sort of foundation, if water right. starts to get into that foundation, you'll have a bigger problem. I see. Almost probably, you know, not worth catching not the water. Not worth catching the water. Before. Right. But yeah. if you set it up right, you made it really simple. But so you can get overly it. complicated with these and therefore right. overly expensive. Right. And all of a sudden, people can't collect rainwater anymore. Exactly. And so, that's ridiculous. Exactly. Our, <laughs> right. whole, our whole idea was that this is ancient. Mm -hmm. For as long as man has been walking, people have been collecting rainwater. Rainwater. And using it from right. anything from agriculture to drinking to just everyday Bathing, life. Bathing, everyday life, like you said, and feeding your animals and every plants and everything. everything. We've gotten too complicated where we've just hooked up spigots to city water. Right. And that's what people are doing. Doing. 40% mm -hmm. of our water is. It's outdoors. still outdoors. So we mm -hmm. can really kind of slow that down by using free rainwater. It's and good, it's clean. It's and see that word that you don't hear much anymore? Free. Free. <laughs> exactly. Free. Free. Exactly. Because exactly. even what we were talking about is the fact that a lot of people buy these now, but we have some information. We're going to put it up. We're going to put up the site and everything where you can go to and get Christine's brochure and information from her on how to make this yourself so that that way you don't have to go to the big environmental stores or chains that are selling you the rain barrel and then if you spend all this money you get this and go hey I had something out there I could have used. I could have done that. I could have right. done that. And that's the whole thing is we can all do this. I had never used a jigsaw or a drill or anything and next thing I know I've, I've learned a whole new skill. Okay. These barrels that's the hardest part is finding a barrel. Find, a barrel. find barrels that have you know, non-toxic chemicals in it. Right. You can make a Okay, so you got all the parts and stuff. Okay, so yeah, this is, looks easy, right? All you got is this little bit of stuff. That's true, and then you just need the other tools that you mentioned. Right, right. So that you have the skill saw and everything, because y'all see you got these little round parts of the skill saw. Y'all know you need that and everything. I know y'all wonder how the queen know, because I can use 
<laughs> That's how I know. And so, and then see, and then see that right there? Your spigot. That's right down in the front there. And so definitely, when I have to wait for it to come out, it comes in. We need it to come out. Let's go out, hook a, hook a hose up to it, mm -hmm. and not only, like we've said, it's free, it's conserving, but it's convenient. And that's one of the things I'm saying. It's conservation, it can be right. convenient, it can be fun, it can be all of these things, it can be affordable. Exactly. And this is a good way and to get And this is a great way to get started. And everyone can, can do it. it. And see, a lot of you at home watching, just like we were talking about, our grandmamas probably use this to wash the hair and do all that other stuff. Well, get the family together and hunt. Hunt for some barrels around the community. Find out what they will use for now. Right. We don't want you to go get one that chemicals used to be in and then try to convert it. Try to find something that maybe something was just shipped in. Maybe some food products All came food to your community in it. Yeah, if you got rice in it or something like that, check around because a lot of the recycling bins that are outside the big stores, sometimes they have them. Check some of the health food stores. A lot of times they sell grain in bulk. So they may have some of these sitting around and just say to you, hey, take them, the same way they do with cardboard boxes. So you can get something, you're helping the environment, you're helping your community, you're helping yourself. Free always helps yourself, right? And guess, and guess where these were going? If where were you going? To the landfill. See? And Trash so, piling up, piling up. Right. And, and then it won't biodegrade or anything. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. So let's use it. Right. So let's use it while we're here. Let's use the idea Christine came up with. You see Please. how hers is painted. It's really pretty. You can get it all done. You can take it to maybe local schools and get the children to decorate yours. Another way to get them involved and for them to learn about something that is ancient. Started way before we were here. Don't think that your kitchen sink was what every generation ever used, okay? <laughs> because actually people went to wells, they went to rivers, they went where they had to to get the water, but God always sends the water right where we are right. with the rain. Let's use it. Don't let it just run down the road anymore. Let's use that water. Right, and it helps all of us. So, Hunter Chilla, that'll work going on. We thank Sister Christine for bringing me back to the way we used to do things. And Chilla, this year what we're going on at breaking the color barrier conference. We ain't gonna let y'all just watch we be giving you some homework. So now send us some emails with some of your pictures of your rain barrels. You might already have one. Send me a picture to G-U-L-L-G-E-E-C-O at AOL.com, GullGeekCardAmericaOnline.com, or if you're on Facebook, go to Gullah Geechee Nation on Facebook and post me up a few shots and say, hey, I saw you and Christine on what wine on, and I went and make my aunt rain barrel. So we want to see it. We right. also want to see it with some water in it. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So chilling, that all going on right here in Atlanta, GA, at the Breaking the Color Barrier Conference.